Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. In today's video we are covering everything you ever wanted to know about hyaluronic acid. This video has taken me so much longer than I ever expected because what I originally planned was to make this part of my simplifying skincare series where we just kind of take a more difficult topic, make it more simple, talk about what are possible options for you, how to use it. But when it came to hyaluronic acid, I thought we were dealing with in general a kind of simple idea. And what ended up happening is I discovered that it's actually more complicated than we might think. However, I promised this series and I'm still going to do my best to give you a simple overview of hyaluronic acid. But then in the second half of this video, I want to talk about what I'm perceiving as potential misconceptions around hyaluronic acid, a lot of ideas that float around about this molecule that aren't necessarily substantiated in scientific research. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start with what the heck is hyaluronic acid and what is the hype? So hyaluronic acid is a humectant that is capable of retaining 1,000 times its weight in water. Your body naturally produces hyaluronic acid and like a lot of things in this life, with time you produce less and less of it, contributing to the characteristics of aging. Why is father time so rude? He takes so much from us. You hit 30 and he starts taking your body stuff. That's rude. But because it is something that we initially have so much of in our skin when we are younger, as we start to age, we lose it, and we're always looking for ways to restore these molecules, hyaluronic acid, collagen. So in this sense, hyaluronic acid is kind of similar to its buddy collagen in that as you age, you lose it, and therefore we are seeking ways to add that hyaluronic acid back into our skin. And for this particular video, I'm going to be discussing your options in terms of topical skincare products as well as supplements. And when it comes to choosing a hyaluronic acid containing product in your skincare routine, it gets a little tricky because there are several different forms that you can find on a label. First off, you have hyaluronic acid, which is typically a bit of a big molecule and sits on the surface of the skin. You also have sodium hyaluronate, which is the salt form. And because it is the salt form of hyaluronic acid, it is actually more stable as well as smaller and thus utilized better by your skin. Then you have a third form, hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid. And hydrolyzed simply means cut into tiny pieces. The reason you might want this is like I said, that hyaluronic acid molecule is big and sits on the surface of your skin. Whereas if you hydrolyze it, you might be able to get it deeper into the skin, thus giving you different benefits at different levels of your skin. So here's kind of one of the first reasons that hyaluronic acid gets a little tricky. So I just described three forms, but within those three forms, you can still have different molecular weights. So you end up in a situation where the possibilities of the type of hyaluronic acid you're using are rather large. But the take home point here is still the same. As long as you are using different molecular weights, different forms of hyaluronic acid, you are giving your skin more benefits both on the surface and deep within the skin. So I'm gonna give you some recommendations for hyaluronic acid and I'm also gonna tell you, I have tried a ton of products containing hyaluronic acid and I found that for myself, it has been very, very true that the more forms of hyaluronic acid appear in a product, the more I see results. For that reason, I actually have three favorite products to share with you. Let's start with the Hadalabo Premium Lotion. This is a very lightweight texture. This one came very highly recommended to me by my subscribers who never fail to give me good suggestions. This product contains five different forms of hyaluronic acid. It is fairly affordable. It is a little more difficult to find, although you can purchase it through YesStyle, which is where I bought mine. The Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum also contains multiple forms of hyaluronic acid, and it's a little bit easier to find if you're in the United States. You can easily get it from Ulta. Absolutely fantastic product that I have raved about in so many videos at this point that I've lost count. But I also have a new favorite, 
And that is none other than the NEOD Multimolecular Hyaluronic Complex. This is fairly new to me, but talk about instant results. It contains so many different forms of hyaluronic acid that I would be genuinely surprised if it doesn't work out for you. When we get into the more nuanced discussion of hyaluronic acid, what I'm about to say here will make a little more sense. Another popular product is the Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acid 2%, bearing in mind that this product has a very slimy consistency to it, and also the Good Molecules Hyaluronic Acid Serum, which has a very low percentage of hyaluronic acid in it. However, this may actually be preferable for you if you're in a dry climate, asterisk, we'll talk about that soon. As far as hyaluronic acid supplements, the research has been pretty darn convincing, bearing in mind that the citation I have was funded by a brand, it's still overall promising, and I'm going to tell you my anecdotal experience with supplemental hyaluronic acid is that I do not want to stop taking it. After about a month of using hyaluronic acid supplements, I felt like I was seeing results, and it's just continued for me. One thing to note with hyaluronic acid supplements is I would recommend you a minimum of 120 milligrams of hyaluronic acid per day, which is what I started with with the Hum Glow Sweet Glow Gummies. These are fantastic. This is not a sugar coating video, so it is a little bit of an odd texture. Sometimes they have kind of chunks in them, but they taste good. Can't really complain. It's not too difficult to take two gummies a day. And if you're already a fan of collagen, you might enjoy the Vital Proteins Beauty Collagen, which has 12 grams of collagen plus the 120 milligrams of hyaluronic acid. Uh, this is the flavor Strawberry Lemon. I don't like it at all in milk. I hate it in water, but it is delicious over uh, specifically the Shobani strawberry Greek yogurt. Talk about a healthy and good for your skin snack right there. Probiotics, collagen, and hyaluronic acid. The nutritionist in my soul is very excited, but I will tell you, not only is the taste a drawback with this, these are also really pricey. So even for myself, when I finish these, I bought two boxes of these. When I finish these, I might go back to Ancient Nutrition's Collagen plus Hum, which actually breaks down to be cheaper. Let's make sure we also cover how to use hyaluronic acid, because if you're not using it correctly, there are some drawbacks. So make sure that you are cleansed, make sure you are toned, you want your skin to be a little bit damp when you apply hyaluronic acid just so it spreads nicely. And then you can use either your essence or your serum. And very importantly, make sure that you seal your skincare in with a good occlusive moisturizer. If you're looking for suggestions, I have a video covering my favorite moisturizers. Let's deep dive. Let's talk about way more than you possibly ever wanted to know about hyaluronic acid. So first off, I want to start with the best percentage of hyaluronic acid because this turns out to be a very controversial topic. I believe that for these videos, I really need to get my information from primary literature, but one of the problems I was running into was that a lot of these studies are not actually telling what percentage of hyaluronic acid they are using in the products on these subjects. So from hours and hours of digging and trying to get a good answer as to what percentage is most effective, I've settled on the conclusion that one to 2% is probably optimal. And like I mentioned with this, the Ordinary Hyaluronic Serum at 2%, it is sticky. And I think this is just going to be the nature of hyaluronic acid. What I did notice is that hyaluronic acid seems to max out at 4%, meaning you are never going to buy a hyaluronic acid product at 90%, and I can even show you why. So I managed to find an 11 year old video of hyaluronic acid at 4% that somebody had made with distilled water, and it is such a thick substance. I don't think you could possibly even use 5% hyaluronic acid after seeing that video, which I will make sure to link below. Now it also seems that the lowest percentage you might be able to use and still see benefits could be as low as 0.1%. This makes sense bearing in mind that hyaluronic acid is a fairly potent molecule attracting 1000 times its weight in water, which is why ultimately the Good Molecules Hyaluronic Serum might still work out for you. This is at less than 1%, 
but it may even work better for some of you that do not like the sliminess associated with a higher percentage of hyaluronic acid, or for those of you who are in a drier climate. Which is the next topic? When it comes to hyaluronic acid, you may have heard that if you are in a dry climate, it is not recommended because it may pull moisture from your skin if the moisture is not available in the air and thereby make your skin drier. The exact opposite of what you want if you're using a hyaluronic acid serum. However, to date, I have not been able to find any published literature on this. I have not been able to find anything other than anecdotal experiences. Now, all of that said, these anecdotal experiences do include professionals in the industry, including estheticians. From everything I've read, I'm actually starting to think this may be an overstated concern, because if you think about it, we just established that 2% hyaluronic acid is a good percentage as is potentially much lower. So you could have a product that has a very high amount of water in it, all of the water that that hyaluronic acid needs, in which case you don't need to worry about hyaluronic acid seeking out more water. So I think the ultimate bottom line here is you're probably able to use this in a drier climate, but I would absolutely make sure that you are sealing your skincare routine with a good occlusive moisturizer. So ultimately, if you're in a drier climate and you've avoided hyaluronic acid because of this circulating rumor, I want you to know it may actually be nothing more than a circulating rumor. And yet, I do have my own anecdotal reasons for thinking that there's probably some truth to this. And that is my experience with the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Power. I've made a video on this. I love this powder, but I live in a very, very humid area where I would not see any potential cons from my hyaluronic acid not having enough water. But look at the reviews of this product. There are a lot of people who are saying this made my skin so much more dry. It has never done that for me. That makes me think mm, there's probably something to this rumor. But you know, I would just like to see more research. I would like to see anybody actually research this. A third concern, is hyaluronic acid dangerous? Yes, this is actually a concern that I have to address in this video. And this specifically concerns low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Now, a high molecular weight hyaluronic acid has a plethora of benefits and really no side effects. However, low molecular weight in certain studies may actually be pro-inflammatory. Pro-inflammatory is typically a bad thing, but I think it is important to keep a perspective on this. This is another one of these topics where you're going to find both research supporting the idea of this being dangerous, as well as research supporting the idea that it is game-changing. While I am typically one to shy away from the words pro-inflammatory in any capacity, I think it is also very important to remember the quantity matters. This is why preservatives are safe at low percentages, not just safe, you need them in your skincare. And I tend to suspect from the published studies that I read that that's the same thing going on with low molecular weight, hyaluronic acid. You may not want to flood your skin with it, but you may actually see benefits from it at a low percentage. And as we already established, you aren't gonna be using a product with a high percentage of hyaluronic acid. So bottom line, you probably don't need to worry. And then finally, is hyaluronic acid really worth all of this hype? Is it for everyone? I'm actually gonna have to say, for as much of a fan as I am of hyaluronic acid, I don't think it is. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant of which we have many humectants to choose from. It is quite possible to have an allergy to topical hyaluronic acid and therefore not be able to use it. And if that is the case, no, you're not out of some exclusive club. You just have to find a different humectant. And again, I was a little wishy-washy on the dry versus humid climate, but it's entirely possible that people in a dry climate do not have the same type of results as people in a humid climate. Again, even though the research does not back this up, it's still possible. And again, there have been a lot of anecdotal reports of that. So at the end of the day, I'm still a giant fan of hyaluronic acid. It has worked very, very well for me in my very, very humid climate. 
But again, it may not be for everybody. However, if you're interested in it, I hope that this video covered everything you needed to know. If you have any additional questions, comments, recommendations, please drop them in the comments section below. I do my best to answer all questions that come in. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.